Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about a book that is that has been not requested, uh, has been recommended to me by dozens of people over the years, ever since it came out. Let me see when it came out. Uh, it seems like it's been just mentioned over and over again, especially during Halloween. Um, let's see here. This one came out in, oh, it's only 2016, so it hasn't been that long. But yeah, so The Last Days of Jack Sparks. Excuse me, my nose is driving me nuts today. I don't know what it is, something in the air, seasonal change, something like that, I don't know. But um, anyways, The Last Days of Jack Sparks by Jason Arnott. I'm going to go ahead and get the bad stuff out of the way first because there's a lot of it. And then we'll talk about the good stuff. So right off the bat, uh, this book is written um, in the first person point of view of one of the biggest, douchiest biggest douchebags I've ever read. Um, I'm a fan of reading about characters that I don't like, um, characters that may that they may be morally ambiguous, ambiguous. They might be terrible people. Uh, you, um, well, not you. You rock, but <laughs> you by Caroline Kepnes, um, Fashion Victim by uh, Amina Akhtar, and uh, Our Kind of Cruelty by Araminta Hall. Uh, it, the list goes on and on. I like reading about uh, bad people doing bad things. The problem here is this is a first-person POV from one of the biggest douchebags I have ever come across in literature, and it just the scares for the first, I would say, 200 pages just weren't enough there for me to care. Uh, the book ends up being a weird mishmash of Doctor Who, uh, let's see here, Doctor Who, oddly enough, A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, and The Exorcist all uh, rolled into one. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a, it's a good book. It's an okay book. Um, it's much better, in my opinion, well, you guys know I don't like it anyways, but Head Full of Ghosts by uh, Paul Tremblay, and the reason why it's so much better, I wish this one had gotten more, even though I don't love this one, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it three stars. Um, I really wish this one would have gotten more attention and more credit than Tremblay's, because he, I think Arnop does a much better job reinvigorating either the genre, the, the possession story, the exorcism story, it's just a much better written piece of work in, in that it's more entertaining, um, he uses modern technology and stuff like that in a believable sense. Um, I believe, you know, everything you got. And one of the things that helped with this is the fact that our main character is, uh, is a douchebag. So, um, but I didn't like reading about it. I did not like reading about this particular man. I don't know why. Um, because, like I said, I, I love reading about terrible people doing terrible things. Um, especially if there's some comeuppance at the end. Uh, Jack Sparks, well, Jack Sp not supposedly, Jack Sparks dies in this book. It's on, the <laughs> it's literally on the thing. It says, Jack Sparks died while writing this book. So it's not a spoiler. It's the whole plot of the story, really. So the book opens up and we find Jack uh, at an exorcism. Uh, and the, the only thing I'm going to say about that is he, he laughs. It kind of sets the whole book into motion. He laughs because he thinks it's fake. Um, he starts making well. I don't think he. I don't remember that he starts making fun of it. But that's really where the book starts, um, and pretty much the the rest of the book revolves around um, him trying to disprove the supernatural after, you know, after basically seeing something that had to have been supernatural. I guess it didn't have to. But what in this one? There's a lot of there's a lot of BS from this dude trying to convince himself that there isn't supernatural stuff going on. Um, and that got old and tiring. The repetition of him just denying stuff that couldn't possibly be anything else. The him coming up with these elaborate leaps of logic. Um, as, a, as an atheist myself, the, the, the character is atheist. As an atheist myself, I have never been that adamant about disbelieving. Um, I would love to find some kind of, you know, special 
you know, other world, some supernatural, whatever. I'd love to find out, you know, heaven is real or whatever it, it may be. Um, but in, up until that point, logically, I can't agree with that. Um, but this character seemed like, you know, like um, one of those militant atheists. Um, and I don't, I don't care too much for that. And I don't care too much for the, uh, the idea toward the end feels like, you know, all atheists... Are, are, are closed minded it was the like the mesh message there at the end I thought that was odd um, it seemed to really harp on that toward the end um, especially when you know he I guess he couldn't see past himself which, which is you know kind of my feelings on religion people who believe in religion refuse to you know to see facts and this this character refusing to see facts uh, even as a, an atheist, it, that just felt like an odd, <clears throat> not odd, but it felt like it was felt like contradictory there. And I guess that was one of the things, you know, they're trying to make him a hypocrite, trying to make, not there, but Jason Arnopp is trying to make him, you know, as bad as possible. So I, do I think that it was author intrusion? I don't think so, but it seemed like in, in the book it focused on that, on that aspect I, not too much. It just seemed like it focused on that, and I didn't care too much for it. Um, it. I don't think that the character was pro portrayed well enough, you know, even given his backstory. I hope all that stuff makes sense. Um, I almost quit this around page 200 or so. I think that's when it was, because someone out there told me that he dies halfway through the book, and then his brother comes on and tells the rest of the story. I don't know who you are, but you, you lied to me. Um, and I was expecting that, so I'm sitting there the whole time. I got my hopes up, and I started hating the book because of that. Like, I want this dude to die because he is such a terrible person. I want this dude to die. And then it seemed like they were going to go down this redemption arc for him, and that that also got me to the point where I was like, I, I don't want to read this. This isn't the book I signed up for. And then there came this huge, like, 30, 40 page scene of utter brilliance. It didn't really turn around the whole book for me. I'm still only giving it three stars. But it certainly jacked it up from a one all the way to a three, 3.5 stars. Um, if it wasn't for the repetition of twists at the end, I don't know what the deal is with every single book coming out nowadays having to have four or five different twists instead of just one big kick in the stomach. Or two kicks in the stomach. This one just seemed like it just went on with, oh yeah, by the way, the explanation for this is a twist also. And it, it just got to the point where I was like, you know, the magician has pull, pulled the, the sheet off of the reveal too many times so far. Um, and that, that kind of ruined the ending for me. Um, another thing is the book kind of doesn't know what it wants to be. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but it tries to be one thing, then tries to be another thing, then tries to be another thing. Um, without really narrowing down what it actually is, but there is enough leftover uh, mystery that I, I did enjoy um, the speculation of the book. Whereas, like someone like a like a Tremblay doing head full of ghosts, he that that ending is just just a total cop out. He's like, it could be, but it also couldn't be. But it could be. But it also couldn't be. At, at the end of that book, just kind of jumps back and forth. It's like, fooled you? No, I fooled you. No, I fooled And it, it just becomes stupidly repetitive, you know. Um, it's not this, it's actually this. It's not, nope, but it's not actually this, it's this. Uh, and this book didn't really do that. It didn't continuously disprove what was there before. But there were so many threads uh, in the story that he had to tie up that it, oh, my nose. I'm sorry, guys. Um that he is like he was jumping through hoops trying to fix everything at the end. Now, is the book worth the, those 40 pages? There, there's some more stuff in there also. Uh, there's one with a shower, there's a shower drain scene that I think was especially epic. Um, but is the book worth those first 200 pages where I just completely dis oh, I despise the dude all the way up to the end? Nothing about that changed. Um, but is it worth kind of torturing yourself to read about this guy? I, I'm leaning toward yes. Um, I didn't like the book. If you read, uh, let's see here, Sa Sadie's or Mother Horror's review on Goodreads, 
She gave it four stars, but she fully admits she had the same problems I did with it. Um, Steph, uh, over at That's What, Stephanie over at That's What She Read, uh, even, uh, I, that review is just four stars, and they both say they love the book, but this both still four-star reviews, so they're, they see that there's problems with the book. Maybe not problems, but parts that they didn't, you know, entirely love. Uh, and I respect that, by the way. Anybody who can look at something that they really liked and find problems with it, I really, really respect that. Um, but with the, with this book, I would I would recommend it just because the it does what Head Full of Ghosts didn't for me, which was take a exorcism story and do something new with it instead of just rebooting, you know, not William Friedkin, who wrote the Blatty, uh, whatever his full name is. Uh, Friedkin did the movie, right? Um, but anyways, it, he, this, well, not this, uh, Jason Arnop did, I feel, what Tremblay failed wholeheartedly at, which was making this, uh, believable and actually committing to an idea, to not really a theme, but committing to the story well enough that he's like, I'm gonna give you some real horror and try to disturb you and this actually did it, whereas in the other one, there was so much left open and so much so much was vague, and then so much that felt like it didn't need to be there. I, I do think that Arnop did a better job, but uh, I'm sure there's plenty of you guys that are going to disagree with me, and I'd love to hear from you down there in the doobly-doo. If you liked it, let me know why you liked it. If you disliked it, let me know exactly why you disliked it down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review, and yes, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm exhausted, but I'm trying to get this done, so if I'm not as perky as I usually am, I apologize. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!